How is it going guys? We have got some parts from Japan. Last week we installed some Advan TC3s on the car. And if you tell me they don't look good, we, we might just have to fight. Since we went with a pretty aggressive setup, 18 by nine and a half with a 255 tire, we've got some work to do. These cars don't come with any rear camera adjustability from the factory. So if you lower your car and you don't install any adjustable control arms, you're kind of just stuck with the natural camera that you get from lowering your car. And in our case, it's not enough, which is why we have this pile of parts. Before we dive into these, don't worry, I didn't forget. Last week I asked you guys to help me reach that 10,000 subscriber milestone and you killed it. We reached it the same day I released the video and I can't thank you guys enough. I couldn't be doing this without you. Thank you so much for all the support. I appreciate every single one of you. I said that I do something special for everyone, so stick around to the end for the details on that, or I guess you can skip to the end if you're really that curious. I'll also leave the details down in the description so you can keep this video rolling and scroll down to see what's going on. We'll start with the small ones first. All right. We've got some Cusco trailing arms. Move these over to the side. We also have their tow arms. Of course, we've got the lower control arms. And last, but certainly not least, we've got their upper control arms. We basically have the whole Cusco rear control arm lineup. Probably overkill and likely a lot more adjustability than I know what to do with, but it's gonna allow us to run a huge variety of different wheel fitments. So I don't think the 18 by nine and a half plus 45 with a 255 tire on there is gonna be an issue whatsoever. That being said, I'm gonna show you guys how the car sits right now and what exactly the issue is. Right now, the rear looks amazing, but it is 100% going to rub. And what I'm gonna do is take the spring off the coilover and show you as the suspension travels up where exactly it's gonna rub and what we're gonna do to fix it. I've got this coil over off. I know there's only four millimeters of preload on this spring, so I'm comfortable taking the top hat off without spring compressors. If you aren't sure, I definitely wouldn't recommend you do this because I guarantee you it's not a good feeling. Okay, we'll put this back on. Okay, we're gonna put this on without the spring and that's gonna allow us to move the wheel freely and see where we're at with the suspension travel and any rubbing issues. This is a pretty standard way of measuring your suspension travel. So right now, I don't have any pressure underneath the wheel, so the coilover is extended as far as it can. So if the car were to lift any higher than this, that would lift the wheel off the ground and you wouldn't have any traction on this wheel. Now, when I jack this up, ideally, you'd be able to measure the stroke, but we're gonna run into the issue of running into the quarter panel. Here's the thought process. If we add more camber, that's gonna bring the top of the wheel inwards and give us more clearance. On top of that, we also have the upper arms, which allows us to suck the top of the wheel in even further if we need. So let's go ahead and get these arms installed, and then we'll mess around with all the adjustments we have. We got the lower control arm pretty much out. We just got one more bolt holding it onto the knuckle and then we can pull it off. New one slides right in and we'll reuse that bolt to secure it into place. Then we'll swing it up into the subframe. We're gonna again reuse the OEM bolt Now, one thing to note, 
you're gonna wanna extend that ball joint out using the turnbuckle before you swing it up and secure it to the subframe. If you have it at the shortest setting, the turnbuckle is going to be inside the, uh, the subframe here and you're not gonna be able to access it to lengthen that joint. We're gonna jack this whole assembly up to align the holes for the coilovers and the end link. On these specific lower control arms, we use a new bolt for the strut mounting location that's provided, and we also get these lockout washers. These go one of two ways. For this specific application, they go this way, but on some, you flip it so it goes this way. But remember, if you're installing this on an FRS, BRZ, GR86, they go this way. I feel like some people might get confused by this locket washer, so I'm just gonna go into a little bit more detail. This is the driver's side, and you want that extra lobe uh, for this application to be pointed to the outside of the car, so it's pointed out to the left. On the passenger side, we would just flip this, so again, it's pointed to the outside, which is the right. So make sure, uh, depending on your application, you have that lockout washer flipped to the correct orientation. We'll swap the trailing arms next. Pretty straightforward, just two 17 millimeter bolts. slide the new ones in. I've already lengthened these to approximately the same length as the OEM ones. There we go. Toe arms are up next when you lower your car and run a decent amount of camber. Sometimes the factory toe arms aren't able to compensate because it's outside of their adjustment range. Aftermarket toe arms are a lot more adjustable and the Cusco ones actually get rid of this eccentric bolt that tends to slip under hard driving. There's gonna be a cotter pin that we need to remove and a 17 millimeter nut. Now I'm actually gonna leave the nut on here all the way at the top because we're gonna need to whack this with a hammer to try and knock it free. And you wanna be hammering the nut and not the threads of the ball joint so you don't screw them up. And voila. We'll slide the new arm in. Again, I've got this lengthened to the same length as the stock arm. Obviously we're gonna need to adjust it but it's a good starting point. Once we get that torqued down, I'll put the uh, cotter pin back in. On the subframe side, like I said, we're getting rid of those eccentric bolts. And in their place, we've got these lockout washers to make sure that doesn't go anywhere and doesn't slip on us. We've got the lower control arms, the trailing arms, and the toe arms installed. Those three were easy enough. Now we can move on to the upper control arm back there, which is gonna be the more difficult out of the four. It's still not too bad, but uh, just a little bit more work. There's gonna be two 17 millimeter bolts on the subframe that we need to remove. These are a little bit tricky to get to. The easiest to access from underneath the car. Uh, one on the front and one on the back. So I'm gonna use a wrench on the nut side here and then I've got a pass-through socket on the other side you can probably just use a regular socket and ratchet Let's see if I can break this loose oh god that's on there all right I'm gonna try and break the nut loose by using another wrench maybe I can just do it with this oh. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna leave that bolt in there just for now. It's gonna be another 17 millimeter bolt and nut holding the ball joint in place.
Also need to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding this bracket and line in place. I've got a rubber mallet that I'm gonna whack the top edge of the control arm with to break it free. Then I can remove the bolt that I left in there and then we'll be able to pull the arm out. Now, depending on how old your car is or if you live in the uh, rust belts, you may need to use an actual metal uh, mallet to break this free. I've matched the measurements of the stock arm to the new Cusco arm, and I'm gonna secure it into place using the OEM hardware. Oh, I just slammed the shit out of my finger. Okay, and I'm gonna get this ball joint into place. Make sure you don't pinch any of the cables. Make sure that gets seated all the way before you tighten down the hardware that we'll reinstall. I gotta get the other bolts and nut in. The arms are roughly installed, so let's take a minute to talk about the 10K giveaway. This time around, we've got four different winners, and I gotta be honest, I didn't actually think we'd get to 10K this fast, so I don't actually physically have one of the prizes, but I do have sort of an example. This is a Project Moo FRS deck. Just imagine my red FRS on here. I'll badly edit it on here just to give you guys an idea. But I had five of these made. Uh, one of them I'm gonna keep, and the rest are gonna go to the winners. And on top of that, two of the winners are gonna get a $100 gift card. It's not an FT Speed or Subi Speed gift card. It's a Visa gift card that I went out and bought so you can use it on whatever you'd like. It'd be cool if you use it on some car parts, but uh, completely up to you. All you have to do to enter is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then comment down below with what you've enjoyed most about the channel and what you'd like to see moving forward. It could be anything. Maybe you found a video that was super helpful. Maybe you enjoy the behind the scenes content, the GR86, the FRS content, whatever it is, let me know in the comment section down below and good luck to everybody who participates. I'll announce the winner three weeks from now. All the details are down in the description if you're curious. I did say that I wanted to do something that would help everybody and obviously four people is not everybody. Uh, so I wanted to do something else that would benefit the majority of my viewers. So if you happen to find yourself on the FT Speed or Subi Speed website sometime in the future, use the code KV10 to get 10% off your order. Now I'll be completely transparent with you. I don't get anything whether you use the code or not. I just figured I'd save you guys a little bit of money. So if you're on the websites, use that code. Now let's toss a wheels back on the car and uh, see how we did. I haven't messed with the adjustments a ton. The only thing I've changed is the length of the lower control arms on the passenger side. On this driver's side, the arms should be a very similar length to the stock arms. And you can see that after I installed everything, it did actually lower the car a little bit and we no longer have that finger gap and it added a tiny bit more camber as well. But over on the passenger side, where I lengthened that lower control arm, it added a lot more camber. And again, it lowered the car, but because we have more camber, we have a little bit more clearance from that fender. Now, I'm not intending to run that much camber, so what I'm gonna do is raise the rear up, and then we'll dial in the camber adjustments with the upper and lower control arm. But uh, for tonight, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Woo! It has been a long day. We've been here all day working on this and I anticipate spending a lot more time fine tuning the adjustments to find that sweet spot where we're no longer rubbing or at least minimizing the amount of rubbing. 
and I am really tired of working on suspension now. So next week, we're probably gonna find something that's a lot less labor intensive, and we are calling it a day for today. If you guys have any questions on this stuff, let me know. Don't forget to enter into the giveaway and use that KV10 code if you're shopping on FT Speed or Subi Speed. Thank you again to everyone who has helped me reach that 10K mark. I love you all. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. This joint here, uh, by turning the ton <laughs> and a pass-through sock, pa pass-through sock. Yes, a pass-through sock. And I'll see you guys next time. Let's get the fuck out of here.